Hi, Amedeo Beretta here and in this video we are going to see how to rig a tube handle using a stretchy IK spline solution. We are going to start by finding a quick way to jot down the main joint setup, a quick way to rig and control the articulation of the soft parts and finally a super quick way to create controls and see how to easily control an IK spline curve without having to create a bunch of clusters. So if you are interested, follow along. This is the model we have. It's for a short movie that me and my students are working on. So I want to first check how much detail I need to go into. The character is standing in a tube carriage and we see a bit of the handle there, but that's about it. So we don't really need much detail there. However, I want this rig to be easy to animate and I want this to be able to stretch a little bit just so that the animator doesn't need to be too precise when animating this thing because the rig will sort of adapt to the position of the hand. I want to be able to maybe spin this handle from this pivot and have this rubber part twist a little bit. So those are the specs. So the first thing that I want to check is some references. How does this thing behave in real life? And I found a very bizarre video in which a young woman goes to the Tokyo underground to see what happens. That's a bit strange. We are going to see that that's exactly the behavior we want in there. If you look at the background, you can tell that's the look and the behavior we want from the handle you see that the perception we have is that for as long as the person is holding on to that handle that line stays straight so we probably don't need to have too much of a bend in the shape if you think of it let's leave this channel named how to travelers and let's go back to our Maya scene which is what we need so I have my model I have a NURBS curve a straight NURBS curve that goes from the center of the model up here to the bottom of the model down here. Those are the tools we're going to need. The reason why the curve is placed this way is because if I create a cylinder and I place it at the center of the model at the top where the curve is, this will be the cylinder of the tube around which this model is rotating. So just to make a test, if I parent the model to the cylinder, you see that now it rotates properly, which is why I want that curve to end there because it needs to end, in my opinion, at the center of that imaginary cylinder so that when I rotate the joint system around, it will rotate around the pole. These are the requirements we need. So the model and an herbs curve going down along the length of the soft part of the model itself. Now I need the joints to control that model and to create the joints super easy I mean you could go skeleton and create joints but really since we know we need joints along the length of that curve it's easier to use a script in my case I have a script which is called curve to joints 0.3 you can find it online on Daniel Franco's YouTube channel in the description of his video you will find the link to the script but there are many scripts available that do the same thing so you can use this or you can use another script. It doesn't really matter. All you need is joints along that curve. I reckon six joints will do. So I have the curve selected and I click create. I have my curve selected. Six joints I think is a good number for my model. I hit create and I have my joints. If like me, you have the joints created the opposite way. So they go from bottom to top. Remember, we really would like to control the animation from here. This way we can swing the handle from the top rather than from the bottom. If these joints are built the opposite way, all you need to do really is to select the curve, go under modeling toolkit, curves, reverse direction. Now when you create the joints, you see that the joints will go the other way around. I probably want to rename the joints. I will call this thing ribbon underscore and then I will give it an index of 1 and padding of 2 and then maybe I will give them a suffix as well. That's going to look neater in my outliner. Now I would like to be able to control those joints using this curve but as you see that does not happen right now because there is no connection between the joints and the curve. To create that connection we need something called a Nike spline. So I go under rigging, skeleton, and in there you see I have something called create IK spline handle. I click on the options of it and in the options I have to be careful. I do not really need to auto create a curve because I already have a curve. So this needs to be off. Auto create curve, we don't need it, so it goes off. Now the cursor has changed shape and down here in the help line, it's saying left mouse button to pick start joint. So I'm going to grab the first joint of the chain. Then Maya is asking for the last joint. I'm going to grab the last joint of the chain. And then Maya is asking for the curve. So I'm going to disable the ability to select joints in there. And I'm going to click here where I know the curve resides. As a result, there is a high key handle created in the outliner. If I now grab the curve, you see that the curve is bringing around the joints. If I deform the curve, you see that I'm deforming the joints as well. Now I would need to control that curve. I could use clusters, but I'm lazy and I would 
like to control this rig with just two joints or two controls depending on how you want to do it to do that i will create one joint doesn't matter where you create it i will create it there i will make it bigger so that we see where it stands and then i will snap it to the first joint of the ike handle that's going to be the joint i'm going to use to control the top of the model so i'm going to snap it there and this one is going to be my top joint and then I'm going to hit Control D and I'm going to duplicate it and snap it at the bottom because I need remember a bottom joint so again snap it at the bottom and this one is going to be my bottom there you go now I could use those joints to control the curve in fact I could select both the joints the curve and go skin bind skin apply and now when I move those two joints you see that the curve follows along that's a lot easier than having to create a bunch of clusters and then have to control them somehow but you know clusters are useful but in this case I think I could go for joints now let's see the effect of the formation on the geometry I don't think I will be keeping the geometry attached to the joints until the end I think in the end I will use another tool to move the geometry around but let's see it with the joints right now so I'm going to skin the geometry to the IK spine and I'm going to animate the lower joints just to see what happens as I move it around you can call it calisthenics I'm moving the rig around and seeing how it behaves and then one thing that we have to keep in mind is that I want to be able to twist that part right I want to be able to twist the lower part of the handle but you see that now as the joint rotates that twist isn't happening let's make it happen let's see if the IK handle lets us do that I'm going to select it, go into IK Solver Attributes, and under there you will find Advanced Twist Controls. The IK handle can also twist by using a twist channel you see in here. That also works, but I want something which is controlled by these joints. Right now, I would need to connect the twist control to the joints, and that would be not much work, but enough to discourage me. So I'm lazy, and I will instead try and figure out how the Advanced Twist Controls work. A brief search brought me to this YouTube channel named WA Luigi 58 and the tutorial is named Advanced Twist Spline AK and that tutorial explains you very well how this thing works. First of all, let's enable the twist controls. So when this joint twists, we want the geometry to twist. In practice, we want the IK spline to twist as well. So let's grab the IK handle, scroll down until we find IK solver attributes and in there you will find advanced twist controls. I will enable twist controls. I will do this operation in the bind pose. As a world up type, we want to use two controllers. We want to have the rotation of this dude here, and the rotation of the controller down here. They're two joints really, they're not controllers. So that means that as a world up type, I'm going to use the object rotation up start and end at the top and at the bottom. Then forward and up axis, what do they mean? If you select a joint from your IK spline chain, you are in object mode and in scale mode, now, whichever axis is pointing down the length of the joint is your forward axis. Right now, positive Y is pointing up. So the forward axis is negative Y. So in here, forward axis, negative Y. Don't worry about the twitchy response in here. We're going to disable the twist control for a second. Then we're going to check the up axis. If you look down your joint chain this way, the up axis is the one pointing up, while the forward is the one pointing along the length of the joint chain. So it seems to me that the up axis in here will be positive Z. So I'm going to go back into the IK handle there and I'm going to re-enable the twist controls. Don't worry about the twitchy reaction. And in the up axis, I'm going to specify positive Z. There you go. Still not what I wanted, but we don't worry too much about that. It won't work yet, of course, because we need to specify the objects we're going to use for alignment. And the objects are the top and bottom joints. So down here under world up object, I will specify top joints and then I will specify bottom joint. There you go. Now they're specified, but it still doesn't work. And that's because we need to specify what's the up vector for these dudes. And if you look at the joints, the up vector, which needs to point in the same direction of the IK spline joint, needs to point in this direction, right? So it would be negative Z. So let's have a look in the IK handle and let's input zero in the Y and minus one in the Z box. You see that now the top is sorted. Let's do it with the bottom minus one and the geometry went back to normal. It's a bit of a leap of faith if you do it the first time, I think. Now everything should work this, the same way, except now you can twist the geometry. Cool, right? You can also control the twist by using a ramp down here. Now we need to control this geometry, but that's easy, right? We can select the geometry, the joint and skin bind skin. Now everything should work the way it should. It could still be improved, especially considering that when the curve becomes shorter, you see that the ribbon does not adapt. We probably want this ribbon to be a bit stretchy. In the movie we are working on right now, the reason why I'm doing this tutorial, by the way, we're not going to stretch this too much, but I think it would be neater if we stretch it and we learn something more. So let's make it stretchy. A few seconds of Googling bring us to the YouTube channel of Bob McAfee. And in this Stretchy Spine Maya tutorial, he shows you how to make it stretchy. And to make it stretchy, I'm pretty sure 
remember that I will have to evaluate the length of the curve. If I can measure the length of the curve and scale the joints like the length of the curve, then I should be able to make the geometry stretch like the curve. One of the things I've learned is that you can select a curve and then in a melt tab of the script editor in Maya, you find the script editor down here in the corner, in the bottom right corner, you can type in arc len minus ch1. With the curve selected, I press enter and the result of the operation is something called a curve info node, which is really interesting because if I then go and check the curve info node, contains the length of the curve. You see that as the curve moves around, the curve info node is changing the arc length. So it knows how long a curve is. That is useful. Now you see I'm stretching and if I select the curve, again, the curve info tells me the length. Really neat. So I have that number, which is the length of the curve. Now I have to find a way to use that for my joints. Let's imagine for a second that this curve I have on screen is the curve which is driving my current break. And this cube I have on screen is the joints that are driving my current break. The curve gets longer, you see, the arc length also gets bigger, the length of the curve gets bigger, but I would really like that cube to scale up to be as long as the curve in there. Right now I have a bit of a problem because the curve length is not given by its scale, it's given by the arc length of the curve info. So there is no immediately available direct connection I can make. However, I know the initial length of the curve, this value here, I know that. And I know that there is a dynamic value that changes that the curve length can, can give me. If the curve length becomes 200, like it is doing in here, and then if I go back to frame one where the curve length is in a rest pose, the curve length is 100, it means that at the end of the animation, the curve length has doubled. So I know it has doubled. If I could scale this cube by twice as much on the Y axis, then I will get the same height. So it seems that if I manage to find the scaling ratio of the arc length and scale the cube or the joint accordingly, then I will get the cube or the joint to scale up by the same amount. That factor of two that we have just seen, it's nothing but the deformed arc length we have now, 200, divided by the original arc length of the curve in rest pose, which was 100. So if I divide whichever value the curve info is spitting out by the original length of the curve, I'm going to know what the scale factor there is. Let's see. I am going to create a multiply divide node and then I'm going to connect the arc length to the input x and I'm going to check the attribute editor and in there you see that's the arc length. This is dynamically generated. If I move the timeline you see that changes. I'm just feeding that data to the multiply divide. If I use that same value in the rest pose as an input 2, now I'm going to set this to divide. Maya is going to divide this cell by this cell. These two sets of cells are ignored. We don't really need them. Right now, the current dynamically generated length, which is in a rest pose, divided by the current length in a rest pose, the static one, is going to give us a value of one. However, if I check the animation, when I reach a value of 200 in there, if I divide that by input two, I get two. So that's going to be my scale factor. And it's going to be always dynamically calculated. Now we can grab the output X because we are working on the column X of the multiply divide, remember, and I'm going to connect it to the scale Y of the cube. Nothing is going to change on frame one because the operation we have in here, 100 divided by 100, is going to be one as a result. But as I move the timeline, you see that now the cube is scaling up exactly like the curve. Maybe if I could apply the same formula to every single joint on my chain, I will get the same length of the curve. After all these joints are already lined up to the curve, I'm going to grab the curve, find its curve info, select it, put it into the node editor, open it up. Then I'm going to create a multiply divide node, open it up, connect the arc length to the input 1x. That number is right now the stretch number. So I'm going to go back to the default pose, grab the number and paste it down there and then set the operation to divide. Now I'm dividing the dynamically generated length by the original length. On the rest pose, they are the same. The result is one. If I, however, stretch, you will see that now the operation is running and now I have twice the length almost and divided by the original length. That gives us a factor of two almost. If I could multiply the scale of the joints by that factor, I think I would be onto something, right? They would be as long as the curve. Let's try that. So I'll grab all of the joints and I will add them to the node editor. Sadly, we are bound to do this manually. So I'm going to go grab the output X, drop it here onto the joint, go scale, Y. And you see that the joint became longer. 
and the geometry is one step closer to the handle. Now I have to do this for every single joint, but I don't want to do it manually, so I wrote a little snippet of Python code to do it for me. All I have to do is to grab the name of the multiply divide, which is called multiply divide free. The output is the output x, and the scale axis of the joint I want to control is the y axis. See that? And here I only have to name these values according to the controls I want to connect. And all I need to do is select all the joints, run the script. There you go. We are connected. You don't have to use my script. There are many scripts available that do the same thing and in fact better than I do. So this one is called context connector. I trust it does exactly the same thing. With this simple operation we have not only a twisty IK but we also have a stretchy one. You see that this part at the top is scaling and that's not very useful because it means that it's going to intersect with the pole once it will have to run through a pole. But remember at the beginning of the tutorial I mentioned I wasn't sure if I would have used skinning in here. So I want to try a different technique. I want to try using a lattice in there to get the deformation because you see this is very high resolution. I don't really want to go in there and manually tweak the weights. So I want to see if I can get away with it by using a different technique, a lattice. So I'm going to remove the skin from the geometry and it's flipping. So I'm going to investigate why it flipped all of a sudden. To select the joint chain in there, you see that the joint is rotated by 100 degrees. So we don't want that rotation, we want it to be stable at zero. So I go, I'm going to grab the IK handle and I'm going to set positive Z to negative Z. I'm going to see what happens to the joint and you see that now the joints are rotated at zero. That was why the joint flipped. I don't want to skin that geometry because it's high res and I don't want to spend time doing that. I could use a lattice. So I'm going to grab the geometry. I'm going to grab a deformer lattice and in there I'm going to see which kind of tessellation I need. Let's see what happens. And this seems already quite okay but you see that as I bend I get an entire section which is very very straight. So maybe that's not enough tessellation for my lattice. So I will increase the tessellation to something that is more similar to the tessellation of the geometry there. Something like this, I suppose. Let's try that. And then I will select all the joints, the lattice, and I'm going to go under skin and I'm going to bind the lattice to the joints. Hopefully when the joints will twist, the lattice will twist as well. Not bad. It is indeed working. I maybe want these lattice points to be better skinned to this top joint I created. So I'm going to go under general editors, component editor, and in there as a smooth skin, I want those lattice joints to be attached to the top joint. So I'm going to go skin, but you see it's not there because we didn't add it. So I'm going to select it, select the lattice, skin, edit influences, add influences. This way the top joints will be skinned. Let's see. I'm going to select these vertices. You see the top joint is there. For these vertices at the top, certainly I'm going to give them a 100% weight, so 1. And then for this guy down here, maybe we'll go down to dot 8. And then in here, we already are off. So let's see how the deformation works in there. Maybe in here, I could even skin this a bit more to the top joint. So I will grab these joints and I will add maybe a dot 3 or a dot 4. That could work. And so now I should get, you see, a nicer deformation there. Now let's create some controls. I will grab top and bottom joints. I need at least two controls and I'm going to use an old Maya script called KK controllers to generate these controllers. But you can generate controllers any way you like. I select the two joints, create a cube. I select one joint, create a cube. The other joint, create a cube. These controllers are already created within their own group. That's handy. So I'm maybe going to scale up the curve just so that it's a bit easier to see. Same thing up here. Maybe I'm going to make this thing even bigger. And then this one will be the swinger. This controller I will use to swing. This one I will use to control the handle and then I will need one more controller which I can just duplicate and I will use this controller as a controller to which the hand will be constrained. In fact the hand will be constrained to this controller that means that I can rotate the hand around this pivot if I need. Let's imagine that this cube that I just created is the hand. Now if I constrain the hand to that controller as I rotate that controller you see that the hand rotates around the handle which is very handy. This controller is going to be the child of the handle controller and the handle controller is going to be the child of the swinger controller. This is going to be a very simple hierarchy if you think of it. So now if I grab the swinger controller, that one is going to rotate the whole hierarchy. So the swinger controller will be controlling this joint at the top. The swinger controller is going to be the master of the top joint. Swinger controller selected first, top joint next, constraint, parent. Same here, handle controller first, handle joint next, constraint, parent. Now let's see, I already deleted the animation on the joints hopefully. So let's see what happens in there. So now I can swing that thing, but also I can animate the handle and I can twist the handle any way I like. Nice, not too bad. The skinning down here could probably be improved, but that means just like I did at the top, I could go in there and I could skin these lattice vertices at the top to this joint or to any other chain that I decide to create in there. The rest is grouping controllers so that they don't bother us anymore. All this stuff we can hide and group everything so that it becomes rational and logic. 
that's about it. I hope you found it useful. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and hit that bell. Let's go, 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 let's go